The past is a different country, LP Hartley once wrote. They do things differently over there. Another different country is Ireland and the United States of America. Unless you live in them, of course. In which case, they're probably quite familiar to you. These are just some of the philosophical insights I made after watching John Crowley's Brooklyn, a film adapted from the Colm Tobin novel and starring Shearsha Ronan as Eilish, a young woman who relocates from her native island to the eponymous New York borough in the 1950s, only then to be forced to reconsider more than once where her heart truly lies. Will you come for dinner and meet my family? I'd love to. You like Italian food? I'm going to say splash anytime I see problems. Good idea. Splash! Now, I am happy to recommend this picture as a best film winner because I loved it. I hope you don't mind if I drop the accent now, not just because it's terrible, but also because this film is a little bit more complex than my acting skills might be able to deliver. It's not just a film about place, it's a film about memory. It's a film about those sepia-tinted images that people of my parents' generation have for a world that doesn't quite exist anymore. It's also a very successful literary adaptation. At its heart is Ronan's performance, one of great stillness that conveys depth and hidden meaning through very limited expressions. It's also a film brave enough to do things at its own pace. It's slow. The main dilemma of the film doesn't appear until the midpoint. Most of all, I love the ambiguity that's allowed to remain at the very heart of the film. Is that Jim Farrell I saw? He's a catch for someone. I have a life halfway across the sea. Your life here could be just as good. If you go back, I have no but I want you to stay here with me. Many literary adaptations choose to rub out complexity, believing it's not deliverable on the screen. But Brooklyn chooses a different direction, largely through the silence, largely through the absence of description. We're invited to ponder quite what it is that motivates Eilish's decisions. And at the end of the film, we're never quite sure. We don't know quite why she decided to do what she did. And somehow, by forcing you to fill in all the gaps, you're also forced to ask yourself the question, what would I have done in that situation? Which in summary, makes this film all the more fulfilling. Thank you.